years, I picked up this bike a couple years ago. It was in really rough shape. I'm still working on it. But one of the things that had jumped out at me was that it was a great candidate for an upgrade to disc brakes. Let me show you what I mean. First, it's got mounts for the uh, disc brake calipers, both on the back and on the front. Now, having the mounts on the frame of the fork is not that uncommon. Uh, lots of bikes will have them. But if you don't have them, then you might as well forget the upgrade. It's just not worthwhile. But what made it, this a great candidate was the wheels. Both the wheels, front and back, were already disc brake ready. They have the mounts here for the rotors. This is something you generally don't see unless the bike already has disc brakes. Um, if you have the mounts but not the wheels for the rotors, you can buy a new pair of wheels and you're maybe paying a 50, 100 or more dollars uh, for a pair of wheels that are uh, disc brake ready. But this already had the, the wheels that are disc brake ready. So I've got the mounts, I've got the wheels. So all I need to do is get the rotor and the calipers and get everything all installed. And so, like I said, this is a perfect candidate to upgrade to disc brake. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'm going to show you the whole process. So I'm going to start off by removing the old V-brakes, cables, and housings. The old cables are junk and they're too short and the housings are too short. They're just not going to work. But I'm going to put brand new cables and housings on there anyway. I mean, if you're going to spend the time and the money to upgrade to disc brakes, use new cables and housings. And got that done. So these are the rotors I'm going to use. Uh, they're 160 millimeter, which is probably the most common size. You can find them bigger, you know, for like heavier duty, like downhill mountain bikes and stuff. But 160 is a good size. So these ones I'm going to use. I want to clean them to get any oil off of them. And I'm wearing gloves because even the uh, uh, oils from your fingers can get on these and then gets on the, the uh, pads and can degrade the pads. And I know a lot of people go, oh, well, I ride my uh, bike through mud. Yeah. That's water. Water evaporates. Oil really doesn't. It'll get in the pads and just stay there. So what I'm going to use to clean them off is isopropyl alcohol. You can find this in the first aid section at your uh, local grocery store usually or uh, a pharmacy, drugstore. And so this is what I'm going to use. And i use some paper towels here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pour some on the paper towel and wipe these down really well. Uh, if they're brand new rotors, these are used rotors, but if you get brand new rotors, a lot of times they'll put oil on them to uh, keep them from uh, rusting or anything like that in, you know, in storage and shipment and stuff. So um, you definitely want to clean those. But even these used ones, I want to clean them. Just make sure that they're nice and clean and just wipe them down and let them dry and they should be good. Now I'm ready to install the rotors. I'm going to start off on this wheel by removing the skewer. And then I'll put it aside. Again, I'm using gloves to handle the rotor. Now, the, the rotors are directional. We want to make sure you install them the correct way. If there's printing on the rotor, that generally faces out. But you can also look for arrows. And the arrows should be pointing in the direction of the rotation, which, uh, with the side that the, the uh, rotor fits on, should uh, be pointing counterclockwise. So I'm going to go ahead and set this into place. And now you want to use uh, screws that are specifically made for mounting rotors. They will generally be uh, Torx head screws uh, to fit like a T25 Torx driver. So what I want to do is I'm going to start screwing these screws in and I'm only going to tighten them down to where I start feeling resistance when it, it hits the uh, rotor. So when it kind of bottoms out, I start feeling resistance, go ahead and stop right there because we're going to tighten them up more because we, we want to torque them down to a, a very specific torque. Now that all six screws are in there, kind of just tighten just a little bit, I want to go ahead and tighten them down just a little bit more. So I'm going to do this in a star pattern. So I'm going to go like one, two, three, four, five, six. So just tighten this down a little bit more. 
Tighten this one down a little bit more. Like that. So now once they're all tightened uh, in kind of by hand, I'm gonna go ahead and use a torque wrench. I'm gonna use a beam style torque wrench with a, a T25 uh, torque socket on there. And so again, I'm gonna still use that same uh, star pattern, but I'm gonna go up in two steps. I'm gonna go uh, up to 30 inch pounds, and then I'm gonna go around again and take up to 55 inch pounds. 55 is, uh, inch pounds is the most common uh, torque setting for rotors. There are some rotors that use a different torque setting, so check yours, but 55 is the most common. So I'm going to take this up to 30 inch pounds. And then I'm going to go around again and take up to 55 inch pounds. And they're all torqued down to 55 inch pounds. Now that all the screws are torqued down to 55 inch pounds, I'm gonna go ahead and give it another wipe down with the isopropyl alcohol, just around the outer edge here where it, the braking surface of the rotor. Wipe that down. And then I'm gonna reinstall the skewer. The lever should go on the side of the wheel that the rotor is on. And then just go ahead and do the other wheel uh, the exact same way as I did this one. So now I want to go ahead and reinstall the wheels. And you want to make sure that they're fully seated. So to guarantee that the wheels are fully seated in the dropouts, what I'm going to do is, with the bike out of the rack, sitting on the ground, I'm going to go ahead, release the skewers, and then clamp them back in again. Like that. These are the calipers I'm going to be using. They're Avid BB5s. They're a mechanical caliper, meaning, mechanical meaning that they use cables as opposed to hydraulics. And they already come with the adapters made for the 160 millimeter rotors. There's a 20 millimeter adapter for the rear and a zero millimeter adapter for the front. Um, they're nothing real fancy, but they're solid little uh, calipers. I've used them before. I like them. I'm going to start off by installing the rear caliper first. The first thing I need to do is loosen these two bolts here. They go into the adapter. These are called CPS bolts and they're a uh, five millimeter uh, bolt. So I'm just going to loosen these a little bit. These are used to kind of adjust the angle of the caliper. So I want them to a little bit loose. So that way it can move around a little bit. And then this wheel here I want to go ahead and turn this all the way counterclockwise. This is going to open up the uh, the brake pads in here. And so now I can go ahead and uh, set this over here. Um, there's an arrow on the adapter here. The arrow should be pointing in the uh, direction of the rotation of the wheel. So but since it's already on there, it's already in the, the correct position. So I can slide this over the uh, rotor like this and line up these holes here with the adapter and then I can use the these other bolts that came with there and get them all fed in and they all cut they already came with uh, the Loctite pre-installed on there so that's good so I get these in here and I'm gonna tighten these in and they're also a uh, five millimeter hex fitting and I tighten these in but not clamp them down quite yet and then just kind of get them a little bit tight here and then I need to torque them down to about 80 to 90 inch pounds and then I have my uh, beam torque wrench here and I'm gonna take it up to about 80 
to 90 inch pounds here. There. Now for the fork, there's a couple different ways that the uh, caliber could be mounted. One is IS mounts, similar to what was on the rear of the frame, and you'll use the zero millimeter uh, adapter for like a 160 millimeter rotor, and it will just bolt on the same way as it did in the back, just like that. The other method is post mount in which the caliper bolts directly to the fork without the use of the adapter, which is what this bike has. I need to remove these little plugs here uh, that are protecting the threads. Like that. So what I need to do is remove this adapter here from the caliper, but I want to leave all these little washers on there because I'm going to need those. So like that. Now I'll slide this over the rotor and slide this into place like this and start screwing these screws in. And we don't want to tighten them all the way down because we're going to need to use these to uh, adjust it later. So leave it a little bit loose. And I wanted to turn this little uh, red dial here uh, fully counterclockwise in an earlier step. And I forgot to do that, but I can do that now, so no big deal. Like that. Okay, so in the next step, I'm going to go be uh, cutting new housings and stuff. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and screw these little adjusters in. So sc screw that little lock out there. And what I want to do is I'm going to line up these little slots here and then screw this in. And having the, the slots lined up with the slot there is going to make it easier to uh, install the cables. Like that. Next, I need to start cutting my cable housings. I need a piece of cable housing to go from here back to here and long enough so that I can turn the uh, handlebars without it getting bound up. So let me see, figure out the routing here. Um, if I go from here and turn the handlebars and bring it right back to about here and so that should be good so I'll go ahead and cut the cable right here and then double check it And that looks like it will be good. I can even cut a little bit off maybe, but we'll see. So now I need to cut a piece of cable to go from here, down along here to the caliper. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove this into the little cable stop there, run this along down here and run it down to the caliper here. And I wanna leave just a little bit extra on there because I, just in case I need to trim a little bit off. It's easier to trim a little bit off than it is to add. So. I'll cut that like that. Now I clean up the ends of the housings here because see they're a little uneven so I'll just use this to kind of clean these little bits up here so that they're as flat as possible. And do that on both sides. Like that. And then I'll take a skewer and stick it down in to open up the ends of the linings in there so that the cable will slide through smoothly. 
like that. So now I'm going to install the cable into the uh, brake lever here. So put that in there, slide that through this slot. I got those slots lined up there, so the cable goes in there. And so now I got my uh, housing here. I'm going to put a ferrule on the end of this housing here like that. And then I can slide the cable into the end of the housing and push it through. And then get the cable housing seated in there like that. So this frame here, the little holders here are actually designed uh, for like, you know, to adapt to a uh, hydraulic uh, brake lines on here. Uh, but since I'm not doing hydraulic, I'm doing cable, there's like a, a little adapter here that fits in there that works as a cable stop in there. So I'm going to slide this and it's tight enough that I don't need a ferrule on this end of the cable because the cable housing fits like right in there nice and snugly. So I'll slide that in there like that. And then there's also another little adapter on this side. So I'll slide the uh, cable in through there. And then I got the end of the cable here. So I'm going to slide that into there and then push the cable in through there. And I'm going to need a ferrule on this end of the cable housing where it goes into the barrel adjuster on the caliper. So I'll slide the ferrule on there like this. Push it on. And then I'll slide the cable through like this and get this all seated in there like that. So now I want to take this uh, cable and slide it down through this like clamp here. And I'm gonna pull the cable tight, but I don't want to have it, uh, the arm come up at all. I want to keep the arm fully down, but have the cable tight. And then I'm gonna uh, go ahead and tighten this little uh, bolt here down on the cable. like that. In this next step, I'm going to adjust the pads inside the caliper here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a T25 driver, I'm going to stick it inside this little screw here, uh, inside this red dial on the side there, and I'm going to push the caliper over. And so what I'm going to do is I turn this clockwise, a pad is going to start to come out from the side uh, where the dial is. The pad will come up against the side of the rotor, and what I want to do is I want to adjust that pad out until it pushes the rotor right into the center of that slot. When the pad is up against the rotor and the, the rotor is right in the center of that slot, then I'm done adjusting it. Now that I have the pads adjusted, I need to tighten this down in place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp the handbrake down so that the, it, it, the pads are clamped down on the rotor. When I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these CPS bolts here. And it's a 5 millimeter Allen. So just tighten these down. And then that'll lock the caliper in place where it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to torque them down to about 70 to 90 inch-pounds. And then done with that. So now when we adjust this, the inside pad was pushed up against the inside of the rotor and it's rubbing a little bit and that's to be expected. So what we're going to do is we're going to back off that inside uh, pad just a little bit. So I have my T25 driver here. I'm just going to go ahead and turn this dial counterclockwise just a little bit until it turns freely and is not rubbing anymore. Just like that. Now to finish this one up, I'm going to go ahead and trim off this uh, cable here. I have a little uh, crimp end. Slide this onto here like this and crimp it into place. Now I'm going to zip tie this cable into place right here. Like that. And then I can use some nail clippers here to clip that nice and flush. And then I can just push this around like that. And to test it, works. 
Okay, so now I need to cut a piece of cable housing for the front uh, brake. So how I'm gonna route this is from the caliper, come up to the back side of the fork, to the outside of the fork bridge here, then go to the inside uh, between the tubes there, and then come up to the brake lever here. So I want a nice uh, kind of smooth curve out here, go in there, and then come down to the caliper here, and I want to leave a little bit of extra housing here to play with. So I'll go ahead and cut it down here. Okay, clean up the ends of the cable. This one looks pretty good. This has got like a little bit of piece there. Cut that off. And then use the skewer to open up the lining. And then use the skewer to open the lining over here. Looks good. So now I install the brake cable here into the brake lever. So I slide this in there, go through this slot. I have these lined up down here. And then I turn those in like that. And then I have the cable housing here. I want to put ferrules on to both ends of this one. And then slide the cable through. Get that seated in there. And then route it down through here and around behind there like that. And then down through the barrel adjuster in the brake caliper like that. Then I can loosen this little clamping screw down here, slide the cable through, pull the cable tight, and then tighten this little clamping screw back down here again. Again, making sure that the lever is not being pulled up. And I'm gonna adjust the pads on this caliper here. So I'm gonna rotate this dial clockwise till that uh, pad comes over and the rotor is in the center of the slot I think that's about it there and something else that you also check to see if the uh, pads are adjusted right is try the brake lever. If it bottoms out, then it's uh, it's too loose and you should move the pads in. If there's just not enough movement, then it's too tight and you should probably move the pad out. But you should have uh, nice good brake movement. So now that I have the pads adjusted, I want to uh, tighten the two CPS bolts that hold the caliper to the fork. So I'm going to clamp the uh, brake lever down and then use a five millimeter Allen wrench to go ahead and tighten them down. And then use my torque wrench to torque them down to about 70 to 90 inch pounds. that. Okay, so the inside brake pad is rubbing a little bit, so I want to back that off and just do like a couple clicks. One, two, well, maybe three. Turn it. I think it's still a little bit. Another click. This seems pretty good, but I'll only one more. You might have to play with this a little bit. You just a little click and so you get it turning nice and smoothly. That seems pretty good, but I'll maybe do one more click. And if it rubs a little bit, it's not too big of a deal because it's gonna wear down pretty quickly and then it won't be rubbing. So I think that works out pretty well. Okay, I wanna trim the cable here and then put a crimp on. on. Right there, and crimp on the crimp on, like that. So I'm going to zip tie the cable into place. So I'm going to put one around the lower uh, fork tube right here, 
get this kind of tightened down. And I'm going to put a zip tie up here on the fork bridge. Up here like this. This will help keep the, ca the cable uh, out of the way and away from the tire. And then I'll use some nail clippers to cut these off nice and flush. Like that. And then to test the brake. And it works. Now for cosmetic purposes, I'm going to go ahead and remove these uh, brake studs off the forks. They have flats on there, so I'm pretty sure they're removable. Now the best tool to remove these kind of things is, I like, is a, uh, a, a clamping uh, adjustable wrench. Uh, that these things, if you try to use a regular uh, flat, you know, open end wrench on there, a lot of times they'll just like uh, round off those flats on there. So anyway, get this on here. Get this tightened down on there and then clamp it on and then start unscrewing them. They can be very tight. There's one. And there's two. Now to cover up these holes, kind of protect them in case they need to be reused, I bought these little plugs. They're uh, M8 by 1.25 millimeter plugs. And so just screw them in. They just barely go in, so I don't want to go in real tight because I don't want to strip them because they don't go in too, too many threads. But just a little bit. Like that, and those will cover up the holes. Now I don't think these rear uh, studs are removable, so I got these like little covers for them. So just kind of press these over there like that. I mean, I could always just cut these things off, but I'll leave these on there for right now. And done. Um, I think it's a definite improvement to the bike. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, this bike was just screaming for this upgrade. It had the mounts on the frame and the fork. It had the wheels already for the rotors. And I already had the, the parts here. I had the rotors and the calipers already sitting around in boxes. So it was just an obvious project and it was a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys found it interesting as well. If you found it, this video useful and interesting, click that uh, like button down there. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're uh, not subscribed to my channel, click that subscribe button down there. Make sure you click the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. I'm over on Facebook, RJ the Bike Guy. Go over there, like that page over there. I post a lot of stuff over there. Anyway. Thank you guys very much for watching.